In this video, we're going to be looking at vectors. We've already encountered some vector quantities. We'll be looking at our SUVAT, our constant acceleration formula. Uh, so quantities such as velocity, acceleration, and force, they have size and direction. Uh, so a quantity which has that size and direction is called a vector. We also have encountered other things which didn't have the direction called involved, and they are called scalars. So a scalar quantity has only size. So an example of a scalar is distance, speed, time, and mass, whereas our vectors uh, are things such as acceleration and velocity and displacement. So they have size and direction. Now we represent our vectors with a, can be represented graphically or geometrically by a line with a arrow on it. So here you can see a line with an arrow on it, that would be a vector. And this one would be another vector. You can see they've got a wee line. So quite often when we're uh, doing these, you would label these with an A with a lowercase, B with a lowercase, uh, B lowercase, A lowercase, B lowercase, and with a wee squiggle underneath it as well. So that's how you would say, how you would do a vector. There's other ways as well of uh, doing our vectors. We'll look at those. So for example here, if you've got your vector, which takes you from a point A to a point B, then you could also denote that vector as A, B, where there are capitals and an arrow going between them. If we change this, uh, this vector and it was the same thing, but it was from B back to A, it was going this way, this would be the vector B to A. Okay, so the direction is very important. Right, um, if you multiply a normal a vector by a scalar, so if you, say you had a vector B, and if vector B was equal to 2 times vector A, then that means vector B is parallel to vector A, but it's just twice as long, and that is it. Okay, if we're combining vectors, we use what's called the nose-to-tail method. So if you're doing your vector A plus your vector B, then what you do is you can do your A first, and then where A finishes, then you go along your B. Also, just so you know, you could have done it the other way around. You could have got done your B first, there's your B, and then gone along your A, and it would give you exactly the same thing. So A to B, A, sorry, vector A plus vector B is a single vector which replaces A and B. Now, vectors, very important. Uh, it doesn't really matter how you get there, it's just get where you start and where you finish is important. So if I had uh, a vector here, which is x maybe, vector x, vector y, uh, vector z, and this was a single vector which replaced them, I could, do, I could go any way and it doesn't matter. So I could go uh, maybe out here, maybe that was p, vector q, vector r, and then back down here, vector s, it doesn't make a difference if I've gone my x, y, z to do, to do the equivalent of vector a, or if I've done p, q, r, s to do the equivalent of a, it's a, exactly the same thing. So it's where you start and where you finish is what's really important with vectors. Okay, uh, next bit. Uh, here, if you've got your, if you're doing a minus b, a minus b, vector a minus uh, vector b. Uh, if vector b is going this direction, then you can see this one here is what minus b looks like. So it's the same size, it's just the arrow has flipped around. So really, a minus b is the same as going along a and then along minus b. And that's it. And when we add, add or subtract vectors, uh, the answer is called the resultant vector. Okay, very, very important then here. This is vectors in i and j format. So if, for example, I had this vector here, I just drew a wee example of a wee, a wee vector, and I had said it is my vector a, but it's equivalent to going three to the right and going two up in the air, then you could say a is equal to three lots of i plus two lots of j, and that's where i means one unit to the right, and j means one unit vertically. So i and j's are a very easy way of writing vectors. I, uh, so i and j basically are called ve uh, base vectors, and with your i and j, you can make up any vector at all. Absolutely anything, and they're very, very easy to work with, as we're about to see in this example. So, uh, in this question, it tells you, what, uh, sorry, it tells you what your vector a 
and your vector b and your vector c are and it says find the values of a plus b and so on so to add vectors all you do is add the corresponding i parts and the corresponding j parts so for a plus b the i parts of a are 3i and the i parts of b are 5i so 3i plus 5i just add them as you would add on anything else in algebra it's going to give you 8i remember the wee underline the wee squiggly line underneath the i for the j parts you've got 2j minus 6j 2 minus 6 is minus 4 so minus 4j is your answer for a plus b for a minus b you're just doing your i parts of a which is 3i and your i parts of b that you're taking away so 3i minus 5i would be minus 2i then you're doing the j parts so you've got 2j minus minus 6j so 2j minus minus 6j is 2j plus 6j which is uh, plus 8j so that's what we've got okay part three quite a bit trickier it says find c if c is equal to 2 times a plus 3 times b i'm going to do a wee bit of working out for this one so my a was 3i plus 2j my b is 5i minus 6j so if you work that out uh, your c is going to be equal to that's going to be 6i plus 4j plus 15i oops that's an i 15i minus 18j and then you just work that out and see what you get so the i parts 6i plus 15i is going to be 21i and 4j minus 18j is going to be minus 14j so your x equals 21 and your y equals minus 14 and that is us done for this video